Rivers flow, but they often take twists and turns on their way to the sea. When seen from above, you can see the often wild twists and turns as a river meanders its way. Why does this happen? There are two forces at work with the flow of a river. There is the forward force of the water itself. This force wants the river to flow in a straight line. But a river flowing along the Earth's surface will often encounter obstacles in the way. These can include twists and turns in a valley or obstructions like rocks and other landforms. So a second force pushes the water sideways. This force wants the river not to flow in a straight line. When two opposing forces act on an object, they often balance each other out. In the case of rivers, the two opposing forces, one pushing forward and one pushing sideways, cause the river to meander. If we look at things geometrically, here's what happens. The river moves from point A to point B. The shortest distance, D1, is a straight line. But the actual path that the river takes is D2, which is much longer. The ratio of D1 to D2 gives important information about how much the river meanders. Different rivers have different ratios. Let's use the TI Inspire to simulate a river and investigate these ratios. Open a new geometry window, press Home, 6, and 2. Select the Plane Geometry window. Press Menu, 2, and 2. Create two points at either end of the window. Press Menu, 6, and 1. Use the nav pad to move the pointer to the top of the screen. Press Enter to define the first point. Use the nav pad to move the pointer down. Press Enter to define the second point. Connect the points with a line segment. Press Menu, 6, and 5. Use the nav pad and click on the first point. Use the nav pad again to move to the second point. Click on that point to create the segment. Measure the length of the segment. Press Menu, 7, and 1. Move to this segment and click on it. You'll see the measurement appear. Use the nav pad to position this measurement on the left side of the screen. Click to place the measurement. Now let's label the measurement. Press Menu, 1, and 6. Use the nav pad to position the text cursor above the measurement. Label it this way. Click and move the point to see the measurement change. So this is the path a river would take on a straight line path. Let's now create the path the river actually takes. For that, let's refer to this satellite image of a river. Here's how to model this river on the TI Inspire. Press Menu, 6, and 9 to access the Circle Arc tool. We will be using this tool to simulate the twists and turns of the river. To use the Circle Arc tool, you need to define three points. For the first arc, click on the top endpoint. Then click to one side of the segment as shown. Then click on the segment itself. Continue creating arcs on either side of the segment. Your last arc should be on the bottom endpoint of the segment. Once you have constructed all the arcs, measure each one. Press Menu, 7, and 1. Use the nav pad to move the pointer above the arc. Click on it and place the measurement next to the arc. Repeat with each of the other arcs. 
Now add a text label for the combined measurements of the arcs. Press Menu, 1, and 6, and add this text label and press Enter. Next, using the text tool, write the following expression. Each letter corresponds to one of the arcs. We will use this formula to find the length of the river. Press Menu, 1, and 8. Use the nav pad to move over the algebraic expression. Click on it once to highlight. We will be linking the formula to the measurements. Use the nav pad and move to the first arc measurement. Click on it. Repeat for each of the other arcs. When you have highlighted all the arcs, the sum of the lengths is shown next to the pointer. Use the nav pad to move the measurement next to the formula, as shown. Manipulate one of the segment endpoints to see all the measurements update. Now we simply need to find the ratio of the two measurements. Select the text tool again. Press Menu, 1, and 6. Use the nav pad to add this text label. Now enter this formula for calculating the ratio. We need to link this formula to the two main measurements. Press Menu, 1, and 8. Use the nav pad to click on the ratio formula. Then move the pointer to first highlight the length of the river. Then click on the length of the segment. The ratio measurement appears next to the pointer. Use the nav pad to place the measurement next to the formula. Manipulate the points again to see all the measurements change. We now have a mathematical model for the ratio of the two lengths. This equation is known as the meander ratio. It is a measure of how sinuous the river is. If the meander ratio is 1, then the length of the river is the same as the segment length. Rivers of this type are extremely rare. Most rivers have a ratio greater than 1.5. The measurements you obtained are likely to be above this value. Model 20 different rivers to generate some data. Store your data in a table. You can create a list and spreadsheet document to keep track of the data. To do so, press Home and 3. Add a list heading and enter your data in the same column. Toggle from the spreadsheet to the geometry window by checking Control and the right or left key. Manipulate the segment length and the arc lengths to get a variety of river ratios. Once you have input your data, calculate the mean of the ratios. Press Home and 1 to generate a calculator window. Input the mean formula using the list heading from your spreadsheet as shown. The mean that you calculate will likely be close to 3. In fact, if you average the meander ratios for many rivers, what you end up with is this equation. Remarkably, the meander ratio on average is pi. This is one of many examples in nature where the ratio of two quantities is pi. Of course, the best example is the ratio of the circumference of a circle and its diameter. Take another look at your geometry window and you'll see that the path of the river can be thought of as a combination of circumferences and diameters.